If you are a sales manager, you should know the total sales of an employee. Are you wondering how to do that easily? In this case, you can use the data model feature of Excel. Hello everyone, welcome to Excel Demi, your day-to-day -day Excel and VVA tutorial helpline. This is Hadiul Basher and today I'll demonstrate how to create a data model in Excel. For this video, I'll use Microsoft Excel 365. Here is the dataset. It is divided into two sections. In the first section, you will find the ID and the executive names. And in the second section, you will find the ID, their sales amount and the dates. You can see that the ID column is common to the both section. And in the second section, you will find the sales amount against the IDs. Now, if you want to get the total sales against the executive names and create a table like this, you need to create a data model to do so. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a data model and get an output like this. In the first example, I will use a relationships toolbar to create a data model. One thing I should mention here is that table creation is the first step to create a data model. So, in all the methods that I will show in this tutorial, you need to create the table first. Now, I will create two tables using this data set. To create the first table using the first section of the data, click on any cell of this section. In my case, I'll click on cell B4, then move to the insert tab. From the tables section, click on table. Alternatively, you can use Ctrl plus T shortcut to create the table. This opens the create table window. In the where is the data for your table section, you can see that our entire first section is selected automatically. And my table has headers option is checked. Now click on OK to create the table. You can see that the table is created. If you want to change the style of this table, move to the table design contextual tab. In the table styles section, click on this drop down icon. Here you will find different available options as the style of your table. You can choose any style according to your choice. In my case, from the light section, I'll choose none. And you can see that the style is applied to this table. Now I'll name this table as this table contains the data of the executives, so from the table design contextual tab in the properties section, in the table name field, I'll set the name as executives. From now on, the table will be referred as executives. Similarly, I'll create a table with the second portion of this dataset. Click on cell E4. This time, I'll press Ctrl plus T to create the table. And you can see the create table window is open and the entire second section is selected automatically. Now click on OK to create the table. As a result, the table is created. As I want to change the style of this table, so move to the table design contextual tab. From the table styles section, click on this drop down icon and choose the none style again. The style is applied to this table. Now, as this table contains the sales information, so, I'll name this table as sales table. So, from the table design contextual tab in the properties section, in the table name field, type sales. Our table creation is complete now. I'll use these two tables in all the methods that I will show you in this tutorial. As our table creation is complete, we can now move to create a relationship. So, move to the data tab. From the data tools section, click on this relationships icon, and this opens the manage relationships window. As I will create a new relationship, so click on the new option. As a result, the create relationship window is open. Now I need to pick the tables and columns based on which I will create the relationship. In the table field, I need to select the table that I should analyze. In my case, the table is a sales table. So click on this drop down icon and here you will find the created tables. Choose the sales table. Now move to the column for in option and click on this drop down icon. Here you will find the headers of this table, date, ID and sales. As the ID column is common to both the tables and I will create a relationship based on this ID column, so I will choose ID. Next, in the related table option, I will choose the table executives and in the related column primary field, I will choose the ID column as I want to create a relationship based on the ID column. And this primary column contains the unique values. If this is not the case, that is if there are duplicates values in this column, then error will happen. Now to create the relationship, click on OK. The relationship is created. You will find the details of this relationship here. The status is active. The table is a sales table and the related lookup table is the executives table. And the relationship will be established based on the ID values. 
Now we can close this manage relationships window. We can get the total cells based on the relationship that we have just established. For that reason, I need to insert a pivot table. So move to the insert tab. From the tables section, click on pivot table. Here you will find different available options of pivot table. In my case, I'll choose from external data source. This opens the pivot table from external source window. From the choose an external data source option, click on choose connection. This opens the existing connections window. As our connections are in the tables, so select the tables option. Here you will find the tables that exist in the data model. Now click on open to create the connection. As I want to place that pivot table in a new worksheet, so the default new worksheet option is ok for my case. Here you can see add this data to the data model option is checked by default. One thing I should mention here that this feature is not available in the Mac version of Excel. You will find this feature in the Windows version of Excel. Now click on OK to create the pivot table. You can see a new worksheet named Sheet 2 is created automatically. And in the pivot table fields, you will find the tables, executives and sales. If you click on this arrow icon, you will find the relevant data like ID and executives. And if you click on the sales data, here you will find the ID, sales and date. Now go back to the executives table. As I want to create a table with the executive names and their corresponding sales amount, so from the executives table, I'll choose the executives option. You can see that the executives field is added to the rows area and you'll find the names of the executives in the worksheet. Now to get the total sales of these executives, go back to the pivot table fields and from the fields, from the sales data, choose the option sales. As a result, you can see that the sales field is added to the values area and you'll find the corresponding sales data that is the total sales data in the worksheet. In this way, you can use the relationships toolbar to create a data model and get the sum of the total sales of the executives. You can use the Power Query option to create a data model and get the total sales of the executives. To do so, first of all, you need to create the tables. I will repeat the steps for creating the table that I have shown in the first method. So to create the table with this section of this data set, click on cell B4 and press Ctrl plus T to create the table. And this opens the create table window. And my entire first portion is selected automatically. Now click on OK to create the table. To change the style of this table, go to the table design contextual tab from the table style section Click on this drop down icon and choose the style none. You can see that the style is applied to this table. Now let's set this table name as executive PQ. So from the table design contextual tab in the properties section, in the table name field, type executive PQ. The name is set to this table. Now create a table with the second portion of this data set. Click on cell E4, press Ctrl plus T to create the table. And this opens the create table window and the entire data set is selected automatically. Now click on OK to create the table. As a result, you can see that the table is created. To change the style of this table, move to the table design contextual tab. From the table style section, click on this drop down icon and choose the style none. And the none style is applied to this table. Now I will set this table name as sales PQ. So from the table design contextual tab, in the properties section, in the table name field, set the name as sales PQ. As a result, the name is set as sales PQ. Now our table creation is complete and the active table is a sales PQ table. Now to open the Power Query window, go to the data tab from the get and transform data section, click on from table or range. And this opens the Power Query window with the sales PQ table. You can see the ID, sales and date in this window. And if you click on this arrow of the queries option, you can see the sales PQ is selected. Now to create a connection with this sales PQ, go to the home tab. From the close section, click on this drop down icon and choose the second option that is the close and load to option to create a connection. If you click on this first option, this will create a table but as I want to create a connection, so I will choose the second option and this opens the import data window. From the select how you want to view this data in your workbook option, you will find the available options. In my case, I'll choose the only create connection option. Finally, I'll check this add this data to the data model option. As I have mentioned earlier, this option is only available to the Windows version of Excel. If you are using the Mac version of Excel, you won't find this option. Now click on OK to create the connection. 
As a result, Queries and Connections window is open. From the Queries section, you can see the Sales PQ here. Similarly, I will add the table Executives PQ to these queries. To do so, click on any cell of this table. In my case, I will click on cell B4. Now move to the Data tab. From the Get and Transform Data option, click on From Table or Range. And you can see that the Executive PQ Power Query Editor is open. And you will find the ID and the executives here. And now there are two queries in our Power Query option. Now to load this query, from the Home tab, in the Close section, click on this drop down icon and choose the second option Close and Load to option to create a connection. This opens the Import Data window. I will choose Only Create Connection again and check this option Add this data to the data model. Finally, I will click on OK to create the connection. As a result, this Executive PQ query is added to the queries. Now we are ready to establish the relationship. So move to the Data tab. From the Data Tools section, click on Manage Data Model. This opens the Power Pivot for Excel. You will find the name of your workbook here. And at the bottom corner, you will find the Sales Data, Executives Data, Sales PQ Data, and Executives PQ Data. I have used the Sales Data and the Executives Data in the first method. In this method, I will use the Sales PQ and Executives PQ. If you click on the Sales PQ, you will find the details of the Sales PQ data. And if you click on the Executives PQ, you will find the details of the Executives PQ. Now to create the relation between the Sales PQ and the Executives PQ, from the Home tab, in the View section, click on this Diagram View. And here you will find the Diagram View. Zoom out a little bit to get a clear view of this Diagram View. Here you will find the already established relationships between Executives and Sales. However, I will establish a relation between Sales PQ and Executives PQ. To do so, go to the Design tab. From the Relationships section, click on Create Relationship. This opens the Create Relationship window. From the Select Tables and Columns that relate to one another option, as I will create a relationship between the Sales PQ and Executives PQ, so click on this drop down icon. Here you will find different available tables. In my case, I will choose the Sales PQ and click on this ID column as I will create the relationship based on this ID column. Next, click on this second drop down icon and choose the Executive PQ. Here, the ID column is selected automatically. Now to create the relationship, click on OK. And you can see that a relationship is established between the Sales PQ and Executive PQ. And the type of this relationship is one to many. You can see the asterisk symbol here. This indicates many relationship. And the reason is that a single ID from the Executive PQ table is related to many records in the Sales PQ table. Now that the relationship is established, you can save this window by clicking on the Save icon, alternatively by pressing Ctrl plus S. Now you can close this window. Here you can see the warning about the data connections. Click on this Enable Content option to enable the data connection. As a result, the connection is established. Now we can create the pivot table. For that reason, go to the Insert tab from the Tables section. Click on this drop down of pivot table. This time I'll choose the from data model and this opens the pivot table from data model window. As I want to create the pivot table in a new worksheet, so I'll click on OK. As a result, you can see that a new worksheet sheet 3 is created. In the pivot table fields, you'll find the available fields. If you scroll down, you can see executive PQ here and here. The second executive PQ is from our created table. The first executive PQ is from the Power Query. I will use the first executive PQ. So click on this arrow icon. Now I will create the pivot table like I have created in the first example. So let me choose the executives field. As a result, the executives field is added in the rows area. And you will find the executives name in the worksheet. Now go back to the pivot table fields and go to the sales PQ. Click on this arrow and choose the sales option to get the total sales of the executives. As a result, the sales field is added to the values area and you can see the sum of the sales of each executives in the worksheet. In this way, you can use Power Query to create a data model and finally get the total sales. In the last example, I will show you how to use Power Pivot to create a data model and get the total sales of each executives using the data model. First of all, I need to create the two tables that I have created in the first two methods. So let me quickly create the tables using these two sections of this data set. Now that our tables are created, I will name these tables so that I can refer to them easily. So select the first table, go to the Table Design Contextual tab from the Properties section, 
in the table names field, set the name of this table as executives3. This will distinguish the executives table from the already created executives table. Similarly, set the name of the second table, select cell E4, go to the table design contextual tab from the properties section. In the table name field, set the name as sales3. As a result, two tables are created naming executive3 and sales3. Now, I'll add these two tables to the data model. For that reason, as a sales3 table is the currently selected table, so move to the power pivot tab from the tables section, click on add to data model. This opens the power pivot for Excel window. You will find the sales3 here. Now, to save this model, press Ctrl plus S. Next, I want to add executive3 table to this model. To do so, first of all, close this power pivot window. Select any cell from the executive 3 table. In my case, I'll choose cell B4. Then move to the power pivot tab from the tables section. Click on add to data model. As a result, executive 3 is added to this model. Now to view the relationship between sales 3 and executive 3 from the home tab in the view option, choose the diagram view. This opens the diagram view. Let me zoom out a little bit to get a clear view and you will find the already established relationships here. However, I need to establish a relationship between sales3 and executive3. To do so, move to the design tab from the relationships option, click on create relationship. This opens the create relationship window. As I'll create a relationship between executive3 and sales3, so click on this drop down icon and choose executive3 and select the common column, that is the ID column. Next, click on this drop down icon and choose sales3. The ID column is selected automatically. Now click on OK to create the relationship. As a result, you can see that a relationship between executive3 and sales3 is established. And as expected, the relationship is one to many. Now that the relationship is established, you can create the pivot table. Go to the home tab from the pivot table section. Here you'll find different types of pivot table. In my case, I'll choose pivot table. This opens the create pivot table window. As I want to create a pivot table in a new worksheet, so I'll create OK. And you can see a new worksheet named sheet 8 is created. And in the pivot table fields, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll find executives 3 and sales 3. Now click on this icon and choose executives. As you want to get the name of the executives, you can see that executives is added to the rows area and you'll find the name of the executives in the worksheet. Now move to the pivot table fields, go to sales3 and select sales. As a result, sales is added to the values area and in the worksheet, you'll get the total sales of each executives. In this way, you can use power pivot to create a data model and get the total sales of the executives using this data model. I have demonstrated the step-by-step -step guide for creating a data model in Excel. Hopefully, you can apply this knowledge according to your requirements and convenience. You can download the practice workbook from the video description to sharpen your Excel skills. Feel free to leave any questions, suggestions, or feedback in the comment section below. You can go to exceldemy.com to read our Excel blogs. Or you can share your Excel-related issues in our Exceldemy forum and receive free solutions. For more content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching our video. Bye!